I'm never going to stop talking about video, Matt Emerson. And so nope. today I have got uh, 10 real estate videos that I really, really encourage real estate agents to start putting into their business. Awesome. And today on Wanderings In, we are on the red carpet. The Oscars are in a couple of days. We're going to talk about some tips that will make you shine at your Oscar party, including some family drama. And the Oscar goes to... Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling, and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now, your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. You've reached the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 105. All of our show notes over at WBNOPodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, video. I can't believe you're going to talk about video today. Uh, never going to stop talking video because apparently we have to keep reminding people it's okay to get in front of the camera and why it is such a game changer. I got some fun things to talk about that, some little bit of statistics, which you already know. And then I want to share 10 easy videos couple of them that you just do and use and others that are going to be ongoing ideas. It doesn't have to be difficult. It needs to be easy. You don't have to do all 10 of them, but I definitely think you need to do three and four of them. And uh, are you having, are you going to your annual Oscar party? I am going, we are going to an Oscar party. So that will be uh, very fun. So I was looking up some tips that are uh, some little factoids that I could, you know, sprinkle through the uh, the party when we go. And so some things, you know, some of these things on the list you may know, some of them you might not. So we'll see. So when you have this Oscar party, do you guys uh, do like a, a game on who gets the most wins, picks, do you do oh, that big thing? Is that a big part of it? Absolutely. So, you know, I always, you used to like, I used to like go with my gut and now, you know, it's very competitive. You can't, because my friend will, after each category, he will read through how bad everybody is doing. Ah, oh, Emerson, two Ooh. right. Very, Does very it embarrassing. Does anybody, do you win something or is it just Yeah, yeah there's always right? prizes. And, you know, usually, it's, usually it's videos or, or uh, you know, uh, movies, DVDs of, of, uh, of movies and stuff like that. And then, and then, of course, it's about deconstructing and voting on what are the best commercials, which is sometimes the highlight of the Super Bowl game if it's a, if it's a boring game. Right, but we're talking about the Oscars, not the Super Bowl, but that's okay. Oh, oh, that's exactly right. <laughs> but, speaking exactly right. That, but speaking of that, <laughs> we already, hey, we but already wait, have our favorite. I think, I think there will be some of those same commercials that they'll play during the Oscars, however. Oscars, they have good commercials on the Oscars yeah. as well. I bet there'll and, be and some other one. And hopefully the Hyundai Sonata commercial will be on there because I, here's the deal. I am going to be at the Oscar party with a whole bunch of people <laughs> from Ipswich and and Manchester, New Hampshire, and they all freaking pack the car. Are they from Dorchester? Can they, the the Can they park the car in Dorchester? They're from Manchester. Manchester. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, uh, we tried to play it here at the beginning of our episode. We just couldn't get the volume the a volume to come through, the audio to come through. But we we ha we talked about it last week. Mass, I'm sure we're going to put it in the show notes again. I'm going to put it in the show notes every week for the rest of my life. go see the Hyundai commercial. It is the best ever. But to my point about the Oscars, I they launched them, the Super Bowl, as we record this, is this weekend. Right. And they launched those, and then you start seeing them. So, um, yes, I did kind of muff that up a little bit, no, but no, I guarantee... Events. Usually those events I are bet the, the Hyundai commercial and all the other ones from the uh, Super Bowl will find their way onto the Oscars because that's another highly watched, you know, thing. I was going to say, you know, TV's having a good uh, good week coming up there in February, right? The 2nd and the and the 9th are going to be very highly watched uh, uh, channels or shows. All right, let's go the talk night. video and then we'll get into fun facts to wow your friends at your Oscar party. Or maybe you need to... Maybe you need to host a house. Sorry, we'll maybe talk about that. Yeah, don't, don't be a smatty pants. All right. <laughs> You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Never going to get over that Boston Best Ever commercial. Mm -mm. Uh, all right, we're loving it. All right, so yes, have we talked video on this show? Yes, we have. Why? Because... You got to do more of it period end of story and for those of you that have embraced it those of you that are going to 
finally embrace it this year, you're going to see it change your business. Now, a couple quick stats. Real estate listings with videos receive 403% more inquiries than listings online that don't have them. Say that again, because that's a huge number. 403% more inquiries than all their counterparts on all the listing portal sites and so forth that do not have a video. Obviously, you always have photos. And I started out in my show notes that obviously you're all doing a, lit, a video for your listing when you get it. So that's not one of my 10. That is a given. If you're not doing that, shame on you. You're not doing the most to expose your listing and get the most possible inquiries and in getting it sold. So that's a must. And you don't have to be in it. So that's why I think everybody's pretty much doing that. But right. I know some people who aren't doing that. So get back to doing that if you're not. 85% of buyers and sellers want to work with an agent that uses real estate videos. That's These are statistics that on all the research that I did, I don't know where some of this is coming from the profile of the National Association of Realtor Profile, other companies that just do marketing surveys. 86% of home buyers use video to research a particular community. And 70% of home buyers watch video house tours. So we know that photos are important. What I'm talking that's about listings now. I wanna switch gears to, in your marketing and your overall marketing, what are some easy videos to do to start really having you show up and where you should put these videos so that people can get to know you, okay? So let's talk about 10 real estate videos that you really need to consider or uh, that, number one, I think everybody needs to do, and that's the intro video, the about you, your services. This video is something that you would use to put on your website and your about area. And maybe it's something that you would send to people in an email after you connect with them. Who are you? They get to see who you are. You might have been talking to them on the phone if it's a lead. And I definitely recommend that you have that. And that's an evergreen uh, video unless you change your hair or, you know. Yeah, the change, classic stuff, right? Changes in your team. All right, so that's a must. You got to do that one. The next one is the real estate market update, right? And I think... By the way, I think these videos need to be all, maybe that about you can still be a little over. So a minute to two minutes, make these like one minute videos. People's attention spans, you know, we're talking about these kind of videos. There's, there's a bunch of uh, research and stuff to talk about. If you're using Instagram, for example, you put a snippet on Instagram and then you can go to uh, IGTV and watch. You, there's reasons to have longer form, like if you're educating people, but for the most part, we're talking about one to two minute videos here. Right. Real estate market update, you can do a one minute. In one minute, you can give everybody everything they need to know about what's happening in your market. Especially Number, if, you do it, if you do it frequently, right? You don't have right. to go through a litany of stats. It's just a couple yeah. top things, right? And so you can use your phone, all right? So a couple things here. Obviously, you can just use your phone. You can uh, use the live features that with Facebook and YouTube and, and Instagram and so forth for your video. The other idea here is, and I bring it up for the real estate market update, you could just use a screencast recording kind of feature. If you have stats that you're going to show, just use, use there's, there's a free thing you can, a Chrome extension that you can get. I can't think of the name of it right now that you can add to your Chrome browser and it will record your screen. You don't even have to go get software. We have software. We use Camtasia. Uh, so you don't have to even go there. You can just put a free uh, extension on your Chrome browser and record your screen with you have a little picture in there. And that's how you could do the market update. You could do that for anything where you want to visually show something right. on your computer. Maybe you're going to show them how to use your uh, your website and so forth. Screen Number three, out. screen capture. Next is a neighborhood update. So different than a real estate market, if you farm an area or you just want to go around, I've seen some awesome videos of people who are have it mounted in the car and they're just driving a neighborhood talking while it's taking a photos, you know, taking pictures of that or get somebody to help you. And you're just do, driving around a neighborhood talking about, you know, the, the Bravo subdivision or what's the latest thing happening in Summerlin, right? So if you're specialized in an area, that's a great way for you to start seeing people start seeing you as that neighborhood expert. It's kind of engaging, actually, the kind of I think so. in, in car video is really interesting. It's yeah. weird how they always kind of catch my eye. It's I don't, yeah, so the, the popularity of carpool karaoke. Yeah, it, I, guess, I guess that's what it is. Which, by exactly. the way, I saw something and I hadn't read on it yet. I always thought that they really weren't driving. They do some shots of them driving. And apparently oh, he's, no. being pull, he's being pulled 
Right. They're, they're being pulled as they're taught while they're doing all the singing and so forth. And then there's shots when they're really driving. And I always knew there's got to be something going on there. He's not really watching what he's doing. while they're <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> like, why are you going to be driving around with doing that, right? Are you That's a fan of that? Isn't that oh, the yeah. best thing ever? It's funny. I you I get on spurs uh, spells where I will just sit and watch that for hours. Yeah. Right? Since there's no rabbit hole, the YouTube. Well, that's it. Well, this is the point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> People, YouTube is the number two search engine behind Google. Yeah. So people spend hours, and obviously it goes without saying if you're going to do video, you have to have a YouTube channel uh, because that's where you can have these things live, and then you can repurpose it, get to that in a minute. All right, so another one. Very powerful. I have a couple people doing this. Video text for follow-up. Mm. So when you're reaching out to someone uh, or somebody you're running leads, let's say, and you, everybody's got campaigns and follow-ups and automatic follow-up, but why don't you humanize it? And let's say I just get off the phone and I'm talking to Matt, my new uh, answer, my Facebook ad, and I'm having a conversation with them. I could stop right then and there, grab my phone, record a quick video. Hey, Matt, it's Jan. Uh, enjoyed chatting with you. I just wanted to send my contact information and introduce myself. It takes you 30 seconds. You pop it to him in, a, in his, in his um, and it shows up on his in his text, and now you have this video that you just personalize. Uh, love that idea Very for cool. anybody that's new. Number five is just one minute real estate tips. One minute series that you can do ongoing, where it could be evergreen content, answering people's questions behind the scenes. This is really big. Behind the scenes, you know, this is very popular for a lot of influencers out there. You show people what you're doing. Uh, hey, we're behind the scenes today, going through and doing an open house. So there's fun ways instead of go, let me tell you all the things you need to know about when we go do a home inspection. Why don't you take somebody on a tour of a home inspection, interview the home inspector. Now you've got something that you can actually use, but it's they're seeing behind the scenes what you do. It's really kind of intriguing. Everybody sort of likes that. You know, like what is the what does everything look like behind your job? Uh, number six, new home tours. We're getting a lot of success with this where yeah. you go and videotape. Everyone loves to look at new homes to right. go actually tour them, but they also like to look at the videos of the new homes. Uh, and you can really get some good lead generation going on with that. You can put yourself in there and do a tour. Most of the new home builders are good with this. Um, you may need to talk to them. What all of them say is don't mention the name of the builder, which you don't want to do. You don't want you want to get the people to drive to you so you can take them there. Right. Don't get into the specifics of the price points. Don't look make it look like you're representing the builder. You just need to say something along the lines, take a look at this new model. Here are the features of the model. Contact me to find out about the move-in specials, how you can get your closing costs paid for, standing inventory, things like that. And you could use that in your advertising. Uh, number seven, local business spotlight. Uh, talk about that about every fifth episode, I think. Uh, but a video of your local business spotlights is an awesome thing to do. Number eight, client testimonials. That's a no brainer. Get a client, be in front of their house or whatever, and get them to talk about their experience with you. There's so much you can do with those And a, a written testimonial is powerful, but a video testimonial, everyone's going to watch that. Absolutely. Number nine, community events and things to do in your city. So I started doing some research on this because we're putting together our monthly newsletter. We talked about hyperlocal newsletter a few episodes ago, and we're going to be doing this in our team. And my job is uh, doing this community. I'm going to do the real estate market update and I'm going to do the community events. So I started putting my list together of all the things I want to go spotlight in Las Vegas and Henderson that are fun to do. And the first one, uh, it's so interesting. I, I have to share this with you, Matt. And I think we're going to, I'm going to, I want to sponsor a wandering Zen episode. Uh, and maybe we'll wait until you come out here next because we cool. should go do this together. It's going to be going for a little while. The neon museum, the neon. Oh, yeah, we talked about that. That'd be fun. So the Tim Burton has an exhibition there. Uh, oh. Tim Burton from, you know, nightmare, uh, before Christmas, Mars attacks, uh, Beetlejuice, those kind of movies. They, they, he's got signs that he strategically placed from his movies that are inside the, the neon cool. graveyard. And so Fun. you can go on the Tim Burton tour and you can see all the Las Vegas Hollywood signs and, and, uh, and then look for all the Tim Burton specific things that are there. And it's just been extended for two months. Oh, awesome. But that's an example of something that I've been wanting to do. I've lived here 20 some 28 years and I, I'm like, I want to go do, I want to go see this. And so 
the idea of, of spotlighting, not just real estate all the time is what are some cool things to do in your city or town for families for, you know, so go do it with your family and then find that opportunity to enjoy it, but also grab some video, do a quick spot on it. And now you can leverage that in your newsletter and, and online and so on. And the last one, idea. the last one is an open house tour. Um, whether you're doing a live or you do a video preview to invite people to come to your open house that's coming this weekend. Um, those are 10 easy to do. There's tons more. We, I have links to our other posts where we share 45 ideas for video, but these are 10 things that you could do other than number one, where you just do your video about you that you can continue to do an update. And it now builds a library of content that you can put in playlists on, on your YouTube channel. So how do you leverage your videos? Obviously you need to put them on your YouTube channel and you could create a series. So if you had a real estate tip series, okay, it's the general Brian real estate show that could be a playlist local business spotlight that becomes a playlist, right? So people will find your stuff on YouTube. Then you need to post your, you have to put them somewhere. So when you take the video, unless you're texting it, you got to post them some right where. So you're going to post them on YouTube. Then you're going to be able to share them from that link of where they're hosted to social media, Facebook, Instagram, and so on. Then you're going to want to include them in your monthly newsletter. Again, you can't put them in a monthly newsletter unless you can have a link to right. a YouTube uh, channel uh, where they are. Then I think you can do things like post them to your website. And I talked about this in the hyperlocal newsletter. I love the idea. People don't read their emails. Very small. I have, you don't even want to know how many emails. You want to take a guess about how many emails are in my five emails that come to my phone where the majority of it is stuff I don't want to look at, but I can't, I don't have time to delete. Take a guess. Just you're take talking, a guess. You're talking how about many, a day? No, I just want, you know how you go to your phone? And you, oh. and you look at how many uh, videos, I mean, how many, how many, how many are down here in that little spot? What do you, you think mean? The I little, have? the little dot at the bottom that drives me crazy. I can't see it, but um, yeah, I was, I was going to say 14,000. I wouldn't have been too far off. That's funny. 9,300. People yeah. freak out when I show them that they're like, how can you do it? I said, look, I open one up and I'm like, there are about three emails in here I need to see, but I don't have time to sit and this is, I'm just bringing this point up because I think everybody's in this boat, especially if you have multiple email boxes that you monitor for different reasons. And uh, no, I'm not going to sit and spend three hours. I'm going to scan my emails and look for, and that's my point. People aren't always looking at your awesome newsletter that you send out. So here's the, here's the thing. And I talked about it in the hyperlocal newsletter. You do, you, you create a blog post, you create a blog post with your videos in it and you send a text. People will respond to a text. You spend, you send a text saying, Hey, I just did the market update for Vegas. Catch this one minute video. Click here. You take them to your blog post. There's the video. And now they're on your website where they might look at houses, etc. Okay. Um, so those are the big ideas and don't forget bomb bomb video is another way to go. So I mentioned your phone. Uh, you could use bomb bomb video, which is a video email service. And the beautiful thing about that is you can send video emails, but you can also download those videos or from your app, on your phone, you can send the videos that you've already got in your library and you can text them, text them and email them out. Right. Yeah. All right. So those are my 10 must look, must type 10 must uh, consider videos for every real estate agent to increase your business. And next week we're going to talk about time management for Jan and her email box, because that little dot thing on there is Done. wrong. There should always be zero. Okay, you talk about zero inbox, and then I'm you'll I'm going to learn. I have to hire somebody to do that for me because I don't have time for it. If you're scanning, you can delete. I do that, but I don't ever go to the promotions ones where it will take me an hour to delete all of them or to hit to highlight them all. Or I have to wait till they get to my desktop. Time management with highlight email them. coming up. Wicked smart. All right, <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs> Come take my hand and see the world around you The time is right, just let the lights surround you And step by step you feel it coming alive The feeling deep down inside The best memories are made when you take the road less traveled. Visit wanderingbutnotlost.com for some inspiration. Today on Wanderings In, we are going back to the red carpet. Oscars are in a couple days. I'm going to give you, I don't know, a handful of of stories and, and factoids that you can take to the Oscar party, or if you're just sitting there with your spouse watching the Oscars, uh, just to, you know, to wow and amaze them with your Oscar uh, useless trivia. How about okay. that? All right. All right. Do you, do you usually watch the Oscars, Jan? 
Is that always? Something? Yeah. Always. It's funny. I, I was always huge on it. And then uh, for a few years, kind of got out of it a little bit. Actually, the whole award thing kind of like, oh, my God, I've been there, done that. But I'm kind of back into it again. It's kind of, well, we've been going to a, you know, an Oscar party up in L.A., uh, which is super fun. So that, of course, gets you back into the whole the whole thing. So here are 15 things you may or may not know, but things you can throw out to, uh, to wow your friends. Obviously, uh, probably everybody knows the Academy Awards uh, actually started back on May 16th, which is my birthday. Very good day for that to happen. Back in 1929, it was held at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel uh, in the Blossom Room. So there's your tip. That's something that probably no one will know. Um, and the first uh, best picture winner was a uh, a war film called Wings. So there's your, you know, the first uh, factoid about when and how the Oscars started. The first color film to win an Oscar was, Jana Brand, can you guess? Wizard of Oz? Well, it was the same year, um, uh, Gone with the Wind. Oh, of course, my favorite all-time movie. Well, or the year after. I think Wizard of Oz was 39. I'm not, well, it was Gone right around that same thing. Gone with the Wind. Yeah, you're right there. So Gone with the Wind. But you were, you were right in the right time frame there. Uh, the Academy Awards were first shown on TV uh, mm. back on March 19th in 1953. It was by NBC at that time. And I forget when ABC got the Oscars. I want to say it was in 83. And ABC has hosted the Oscars every year since then. So, But first, um, first time it was on TV was back in 1953. And the first time it was presented in color. Can you take a guess on that one? TV 62? 66, actually. That kind of surprised me. I thought it would have been earlier. You would think that TV would have had color. Uh, you know what I mean? It would have been filmed in color before that. But 66 was the first year in color. Okay. There's only been three films that have captured uh, the five kind of prestigious awards. Best film, best actor, best actress, best director, and mm, best writing. Only five. Only three have done that. So those top five awards have only been won three times. Can you think of what they were? That would be impossible, probably, to unless you were a total Oscarphile. Uh, uh, Godfather? It, no, 1935. Is it happened one night? So they oh, won all Clark, five of those. Clark Gable. 1976. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. Ah, got that. Tell me and, the year. Maybe I'll guess it. In 1992. Hmm. 1992. Hmm. And you will be like, ah, when you hear this too. Because yeah. of Silence of the Lambs. Uh, won all the big five. Yeah, exactly. And never, ever has anyone won Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actress, and Best Supporting Actor. That has never happened in Oscar history. Okay. okay. In uh, 2004, the movie was Avatar. Kate Blanchett was the first person to win an Oscar for playing an Oscar winner. Because she played Catherine Hepburn in that film. So she was the first person to win an Oscar for playing the an Oscar winner, Catherine Hepburn. So I, thought that I, don't, well, I don't remember her in there. Yeah. She played Catherine. I don't actually I don't remember either, but she played Catherine Hepburn in that movie. So in uh, Avatar? And no, not Avatar. The AV I might have said Avatar. Aviator, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I saw Aviator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw her in there. I'm like, yeah. I don't Catherine Hepburn was not in Avatar. But and the reason why I said that, speaking of Avatar, here's where Avatar comes into the mix. And I uh, thought this was it. kind of this was kind of fun actually, because uh, I had mentioned the setup of our show uh that there was some family drama. Uh there's always drama at the Oscars, right? But a little family drama uh back in 2010, Catherine Bigelow uh, became the first woman actually to win an Oscar for Best Director mm -hmm. for her film, The Hurt Locker. Yeah, great movie. Right? Uh, her ex-husband, James, uh, James Cameron, was also there, and his uh, movie Avatar was actually up for, um, uh, or he was up for Best uh uh, director, director also. For, yeah, for um, and yeah. she won, right? She did win, and she awesome. was the first woman actually to win. There's only right. been four of her, four women ever to receive, and actually the, even the nomination for it: Sofia Coppola, uh, Jane Campion, uh, Lisa. I forget how you say her name. Wirt Muller, I believe, uh, are the other th other three people. So women are are they've broken the glass ceiling, but are still not as represented as exactly. uh, you know as as they. Should only be. she was the only one who won. For Who's actually won, the right? For yeah. For, for the Hurt Locker. Now, on that same kind of note, the Hurt Locker broke another uh, film industry record that year. It bagged six Oscars out of a total of nine nominations, including the coveted Best Picture Gong. Uh, and it was the lowest grossing movie ever to win an Oscar. Wow. Lowest grossing movie. Now, uh, and it, it earned $21 million at the box office, less than 2% of what it cost actually, uh, wow. um, uh, of, excuse me, less than 2% of what its competitor 
Avatar made in ticket sales in the same year. So Avatar holds the crown for the most expensive movie that has ever been produced uh, for the Oscars. So you know, talk about a drama within this. Yeah. These two people, you know, who were married at one point, right? All happening in that same year. All kinds of stats and stuff around those two films and those two people. Uh, back in or 2001, the best animated film category was added to the Oscars, Oscars yeah. right? And do you remember back, I think it was 92, I believe it was 92, Beauty and the Beast was actually the first animated film that was actually nominated for Best Picture. Oh, wow. And I remember that being a big dramatic thing. I worked at Disneyland at the time and it was like, woohoo, go Disney, best, you know, best film. And it was a car cartoon. Of course, you don't call them cartoons, but uh, it was like a cartoon for Best Picture. What's that all about? So it started that whole drama. They when they, their own category. When they, yeah, when they created that weird thing, and I don't know what year they did this, where they stopped just having five nominees and they expanded it to 10 nominees. And now yeah. it's like anywhere between five and 10. And I don't even know what the rules are on that anymore. But um, once they started doing the animated, had having the animated uh, uh, uh category coming up there. There's only been a couple other that have actually been up there for best film as well. And I think it was a uh, Toy Story 3 and up. But anyway, uh, animation started playing a much, much bigger role and was really accepted more in the mainstream, right? It wasn't just a kid's thing anymore. Uh, in 2017, the romantic musical La La Land picked up 14 Oscar nominations, which made it tie with what at the time was the um, the uh, record held by Titanic, because that obviously was huge when it was uh, when it was in there. And All About Eve, which honestly is one of my favorite movies. Do you know that movie, Jan? Yeah, yeah. isn't it it's, uh, Joan Crawford? Yeah, exactly. It's like uh, no, um, not Joan Crawford. Um, Betty uh, Davis. Betty it's like, Davis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Betty Davis. Yeah. Betty Knight. So uh, that's a that's a great film. Uh, Walt Disney still is the person that holds the most Oscars, right? He received fifty nine nominations and uh, twenty six competitive awards throughout his career. Wow. So. Uh, he he holds the record. Uh, the one that kind of comes in there uh, second, someone that is still alive today and still cranking out uh, Oscar worthy stuff every year is the composer John Williams. Sure. He's the most uh, nominated living person with 51 nominations wow. uh, that, or over the years, five Oscar wins, which it's so funny when you think about some of these people that you hear, you know, that is up literally every year for multiple nominations. Uh, and you just know all of his songs and the background music from all the movies he's done so well. You think he's only won five, my God. It's it's interesting. On on the the uh, the line of who's won the most, Meryl Streep is the most nominated performer. No I think every guess. I think everybody knows that. Do you know how many how many times she was she was nominated? There's been nominated. But how many wins? Well, she was she was nominated uh, 21 times for thing. And I think she only has five wins, four or five yeah. wins. That's another one you think, what? It seems like she should have had more. Uh, Jack Nicholson actually is the most nominated male performer performer mm -hmm. in Oscar history with 12 nominations. Mm -hmm. um, and so who do you think has won the Best Actress Award the most times? So it's so not... it wasn't Meryl Streep, not Meryl Streep. Mm. Mm, is it an American actress? Yep. I don't know. I got, I feel like I see who it is, and I just can't. I can't think it's of it. Catherine Hepburn. She's uh, won the okay. Oscar actually four times. So Meryl yeah. Streep has won a combination of Best Actress and Best Supporting Actress uh, uh, Oscars when she's won. And okay. the the last one on the list here is um, the only who, person who well, have who, won. Go ahead. What are you who's, who's won the most May actors? Well, the the only person. I actually I don't know who's won the. Oh no, it was Jack Nicholson. He, he had yeah. the most nominations, but he also had the most wins. I think so. As a male, as an actor. I, actually, I don't know that stat, Jan. You you, you just stumped the the uh, the trivia guy. The here. trivia guy. All right. Yeah. That. But Daniel Day Lewis is the only person to have won three Best Actor uh, uh, nominations, and Tom Hanks is always right there, right? Because he gets nominated yeah. a lot too, and he won those two back to back uh, Oscars. Uh, oh, I would have put Tom Hanks up in that, yeah, that yeah. group there. So not as many as Jack Nicholson. We need to we need to put yeah. a Google on that. I need to do a little <laughs> research on that one. So anyway. Some, some interesting uh, uh, stats there you can take to your next Oscar party. I'm looking forward to seeing what wins for Best Picture because it's a really divert. I mean, it always is, right? You always have these things like you can't even compare these films. Like I love Parasite. I love Jojo Rabbit and Gone with Hot and the Irish. I mean, there, how do you even how do you even choose from that? I don't know. But they choose. The Academy chooses, so we'll. I know. See. So I'm looking. I always look forward to feel to see feel it out to see if it's a little bit political because obviously it is a little bit political. Well, is that who votes? It's the members of the Academy, right? 
Okay. Right. All I think right. that I think, believe it the way it works is you vote if you're an actor, you, you've the nominations you vote for only people in your category. Oh, really? But then when it comes time to vote, everybody votes for the nominee. Best picture. Yeah. And for yeah, all of them, it. really. You know what I mean? So, oh, I anyway. See. Yeah. So that's right. it. Enjoy the Oscars coming up this week. Just make sure that you get up, get out, and be forever wandering but not lost. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that's a take for episode 105 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. All of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, uh, really, we could talk about video all the time. You, you can never talk about video enough. Isn't that right? No, and I'm going to keep on talking about it until it's I true. really get people on the movement of it. Uh, so, you know. I mean, after... after do uh, it. Don't do it. Those that do... You're going to see the benefits. After 99 episodes of the podcast, you moved us to video, right? We started with video. We went off it. Right. We're back again. And actually, we're having a lot of fun. With it. We are. And it's, it's we can do all these things with it. We can post it. People are more likely to take a look at the video. Not everybody understands how to watch or listen to a podcast, to be honest. It's one of the right. reasons we looked at it. But, but we knew that the reach of video was better. So that's why we're back doing it. And we can break it down, have fun with it. So go, you know, and, it's, and we're using something called Be Live. Live lets us do all this recording and do the split screen, which you can host your own show. There's endless opportunities, but why don't you just start with that list of 10 things I went over today and pick a couple. Pick a couple and get started. Just do one. Just do one. That's right. And everyone, just get out there and take the road less traveled.